Stitchy friends, I'm Christy, I'm the Crosshatch Quilter, and this is Gus, my faithful stitching and sewing companion. Welcome to my sewing room. I am so excited to be here with you today. I've missed talking to you all, and I hope that you've been doing well and getting lots of sewing and stitching time in. I have a lot to share with you today since it's been so long. I have some framed pieces back from the framer, I have some finishes, some whips, I'd like to do a whip parade of my samplers that I plan on working on this year and a little bit of quilting to share with you. So I'm excited to spend some time with you today. I think it'll be a longer video and let's get started. I cannot believe that it is the end of February already. This year has flown by so fast. <clears throat> it feels like somebody had has put the fast forward button on hold on warp speed. And here we are. But I hope that you have been in having an enjoyable winter, or if you're in the summer in he Southern Hemisphere, a great summer. We have had the most mild winter that I can remember here. We usually get really like hazy gray skies and we've had clear crystal blue skies, um, lots of warm sunny days. We've been out walking and just enjoying it. <clears throat> I'm sure by the time that summer comes, we will be hurting for a little bit of water. We normally have snow on the ground until March or April from November, but we just haven't had that much precipitation this year. So I hope that um, the mountains have, I know the mountains have been getting some, but we just have had lots of walks and enjoying it, looking on the positive side for right now about it. Um, I have a couple pieces back from the framer to share with you today and some finishes. I have been itching to decorate for spring. Um, as you can see in the beginning of my video, I still have snowmen and winter decor up, but with all this lovely weather, I'm just feeling the springtime. So I put up this quilt. This is Somerville by Thimble Blossoms. And it is, the fabric line is um, by Bonnie and Camille. I made that quilt top probably six or seven years ago, and then I just finished it and let it sit. I didn't get it quilted. And then finally last year, I got around to quilt, getting it quilted, and then a few weeks ago, I bound it. So I wanted to put it up on the wall, and I'm so glad to finally have it done. It is, it's just, I love house blocks so much. So after all these years, it's nice to finally get it done. <laughs> Um, some things are worth waiting for, I guess. But um, so my first piece that I have back from the framer is a Christmas piece that I got back um, a week or two right before Christmas. And it was fun to have it up on the wall for a couple weeks. And this is Good St. Nick by Prairie Schooler. And I've had this, again, stitched for quite a few years, but I just didn't ever get it framed. I had it up on um, some sticky board with some greenery and picks but in a bow. But I decided to get it framed and I really love it. It is absolutely just classic Christmas to me. <clears throat> and this next piece that I got back, oh, I just love it so much. Um, I'm glad that I plowed through and got it done last year. And this is a Yuletide Welcome by Plum Street Samplers. And the, when she pulled out when Jamie at the Craft Center pulled out this frame, as soon as I walked up and saw it sitting there, I just, I knew this is the one. I love how it just pulls in all the different colors of the cross stitch. I stitched this with all the called for NPI silks on 36 count buttercream by Lakeside. I absolutely love it. The only change that I made on this one is over here it normally says wrought by and then you put your name. Um, I just added another angel and a little snowflake to fill it in. And I will probably keep this one up all year round. It's such a fun one. So that was really fun to get back just in time for Christmas. And then um, I've had two finishes since we last met. The first one is All Bundled Up by Brenda Gervais. I'll insert a picture here. I've taken it to the framer 
and I should be getting it back here anytime. It was such a fun piece to stitch and I, I'll talk about my future plans here, um, but I just absolutely love snowmen and I see a lot more of them in my future. So that white snow and fill in snowman was, I'm gonna have to start liking white because I want to do a lot more of them in my future. <laughs> Um, and then the next finish that I had is And Heaven and Nature Sing by Kathy Barrick. Oh, I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I um, stitched this with Lori and it was so much fun to stitch this together in person and it has so many fun memories stitched right in. I absolutely, I just love this piece. I'll keep this one up all year round as well, but I'm going to get it professionally framed. I just wanted to throw it in a frame for now so that I could enjoy it for the winter season and then I'll take it and go get it framed. I stitched it on 36 count Mayflower by R&R &R and all the called for NPI silks, except I changed the lightest green in the trees. I changed it to a dark, the called for dark green and then I changed the dark green to a different green. Um, I will, I have the NPIs that I swapped out on my Instagram post. If you are interested, I can also put it down below as well. But this one is such a fun one. I just love Kathy Barrick's designs. So timeless. This one will be not trendy. It will, it'll be in style for a long time. So I'm really excited to get that one finished. Um, so I'm going to show you the whips that I've been working on since we last um, met. And then I would like to show you all of my whips that I have docketed for this year that I want to work on. Um, I talked about this a little bit in my last video. I went through all of my, my whips and just decided on what I wanted to focus on this year so they didn't have any shiny squirrels out tempting me. Um, the last few years, I've really focused on seasonal stitching and I wanted to get some good base, some big pieces for my seasonal wall that I switch out. And I feel like that's got a pretty good start now. And so now I really want to work on a sampler wall. So I've gathered up all of my whips that I'm not planning on working on this year and put them away. I divide them up into different categories. So like I store all of my autumn in a bag, all my winter in a bag, Christmas, Halloween, summer, patriotic, so that when it comes that season and I wanna stitch something in the season, then I can just go to that whip and pull it out at that point. But this year I'm just really focusing on samplers so that I can get a good start on a sampler wall. And I have absolutely fallen in love with them. I I absolutely just, that's all I want to stitch. Um, the first one that I worked on is a new start and I started it with a lot of you and that is The Merry Snow by Hands Across the Sea. I started this with my friend Lily and so many of you have joined in with us. It has been so much fun. Um, Brenda and Laura, Michelle with Cozy Egg, Cindy C. Stitches, um, calculated Stitcher Jennifer and um, Carolee with Stitching is Elementary, just to name a few. But it has been so much fun. A lot of you have finished this piece already. Um, I'm stitching mine with the called for Avera Swa. And here's my progress. I'm stitching this on 36 count, I believe it's called Milk and Cream and fight by fiber on a whim. If that's not correct, I'll put it down below. I'm not quite certain. I love working on this. It is, the colors are just so pretty. I love the border and the little house. Um, everything about this is just, it was a no brainer that I wanted to stitch this. It will be a classic piece. It's got a winter uh, Christmas feel, but I definitely will keep it up year round. And the Avera Swa is, I think, my favorite silk because it 
is a little bit thicker than the other silks and so on 36 count it has a lot better coverage it covers like a normal silk would on 40 count so i'm really happy with that so much fun so I'll definitely be getting back to that and then my next start was only a couple days later and this I started with Lori and a bunch of you joined in with us and it is going to be the funnest sal. It is the 25th day stitch sal. And on the 25th day of every month, we're going to work on a Christmas piece or winter, whatever your preference. Um, Lori and I chose to work on Paper Snowflakes by Brenda Gervais. And I'm so glad that she suggested this sal. It is just so much fun. I am, so this is, excuse me, two days worth of progress um, on December 25th and January 25th. I worked on it. I'm stitching this with the called for everything, the called for threads on the called for linen, which is Abbasidarian by R&R, &R, 36 count. And this will be finished before December 25th of this year. So once it's completed, then I will just continue to work on a Christmas piece every day, every 25th of the month. So it has been so much fun and I've enjoyed seeing everyone's progress on the hashtag on Instagram. Then my next whip that I've been working on, this one, oh, this one is on 40 count and I have to force myself to work on it. And it's not that I don't love the sampler, it's just the over one on it is a bear. And that is Ann Rayner. Um, I've talked about it before, it's my unicorn. So I'm, I'm stitching this with my good friend Yvette and Lily, and they have kept me on this straight and narrow. I'm just stitching this with the called for DMC. And we get little we have to send in our homework and make sure that we're on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I love it though. It's so pretty and that's what's kept me going as well. But I, this one is definitely one that if I didn't have friends cheering me on, I just, I, is, I just know myself and I would just stick it aside. It is stitched on 40 count creme brulee by R and R. And since we last, um, met. Well, I'll insert a picture of where I was last time. So I brought over the alphabet and the border and all of these dividing bands. And then I worked on this huge flower pot. Oh, I love it so much. The colors, just everything. It's, it's my favorite color um, palette. I'm going to put this up in my kitchen framed with glass when I get this one done. So love, love, love it. And thanks girls for keeping me on the straight and narrow. And then my next piece is one that I hope to finish this year. I am going to change the name on it to my paternal grandma. And that is Jane Tyndall, 1864. I will insert a picture here of where I was last time. But here is the chart. I had to get this after I saw Carol the Saltbox Stitcher showed hers. So I'm stitching it with the called for threads. That's not the threads. <laughs> this is the threads. Um, it's a mixture of Averisoa and, oh, I think they're all Averisoa silks. And I absolutely love this. Um, this is one that's really hard to be, to set down. After I get started um, and it's time to switch to a new project, I don't want to switch. So I definitely can see a finish here sooner than later on this one. And this is being stitched on 36 count Confederate Gray by Week Style Works. And all the called for silks. <clears throat> I love this heifer over here. 
So I will um, insert a picture of where I was last time. I worked on the words some more and then finished all of this over here, except I think I already had the duck in. Oh, this one is so much fun to work on. The only thing um, is I have to make sure that I work, have very good lighting just because the linen is a little bit darker. But again, this Avera Soie thread covers so perfectly on 36 count. So if you're a 36 count and you're not liking um, DMC on it, Avera Soie silk covers it a little bit better. So that is Jane Tyndall and I definitely... I'm gonna finish her this year. Okay, so my next piece that I've been working on is Mary Carr by Needlework Press. Another favorite. See, this is why I can't start anything new. I just need to work on all my whips. I love them. Um, and so what I do when the, um, the thread list is just posted in one place in the, um, chart. I just make a photocopy so that I have um, all the thread right at my fingertips. I don't have to keep moving the chart back and forth um, as I'm stitching. And this is a big girl. I'm stitching this with all the over dyed threads. And this is 36 count creme brulee by r and which I think is my favorite linen. I love creme brulee. So since we um, met last time, I have completed the border with all of the berries and it matched up. Yay! <laughs> I always do a happy dance when it matches up. And then I came down here and I worked on um, Adam and Eve. Let me give, show you a close up of Adam and Eve. They are, they're weirdo Adam and Eves. They're, they look like clowns. They're so fantastic. I love them. And then um, I worked on the turkey. I think that's a turkey, a purple turkey. And this deer, I showed it to Lori the other day and she said, it looks like he's wearing high heels. And he totally does. And then the red cow, which is my favorite, of course. That house is absolutely fabulous. So there is my progress. And this is another one that is so hard to put down. I'm definitely going for a finish on this one. Um, here is the threads. I'm using all the called for, except I substituted, um, I substituted the holly berry for Buckeye Scarlet. My holly berry was very pink and I actually have stitched part of it. Um, this flower um, and vase up here is with the holly berry and it's just a little pink, which is fine. Um, but I wanted a more red palette throughout. I'll still stitch some of the holly berry, probably especially with the matching vase on the other side. And then I added country redwood in lieu of bandana. Um, bandana was more purpley and I liked this rich red wine color. So there's all the yummy silk or threads. They're a mess, but this one I think will be released very soon and so that we can all be stitching it. So in love with that project. And um, I, I've really had a hard time recently switching projects. Every time I get into the groove of a sampler and I've memorized the, um, you know what the colors are and I just then it's time to switch to a new project and I'm like oh I don't want to I really I don't know what's happening to me I might be having a midlife crisis because I just want to stitch on one thing and I don't really want to switch <laughs> so but that's a good thing I'm I'm hoping that it will help me to get a lot more finishes under my belt especially on these fabulous samplers so this is my for, this is my only start that I've started in January in the year 2022 and when this came the other day I think it came um, a week ago this last Friday 
I knew I was going to start it. And that night I opened it up and started it as we were watching TV. And this is Wonderful Life Pin Keep Drum by Stacy Nash. It is through Country Samplers. And that's my little start. I'll probably set this aside and not work on it until I have finished my current 25th day stitch sal piece. And then once that's finished, then I'll pick this up and work on it so that I can get it done um, before Christmas. But I absolutely love this. And Stacy Nash is one of my very favorite designers. Just love the, her style and her charts. And then this next piece I started two years ago when the pandemic started. Um, I picked this up and started it with Celeste, with Celeste Creates. And then, oh, after about six months, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. And I set it down. But this is Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. And again, when um, you have the called four colors just in one um, place, then I just make a photocopy so that I can put it up on my chart um, clip and I don't have to keep flipping my book and everything. And I'm stitching this with all the called for threads. The only color that I changed, and I've put them in, um, I used to have them just on floss drops, but with this project, because there's lots of starts and stops with colors, I decided that I wanted to keep them in floss away bags. That way, when I've not finished an entire thread, I just put the needle and the thread back in, it's called for baggy. But I have um, substituted the white for NPI silk, which is 991BB. Other than that, everything is the called for. And I am working on this on Sundays with Lori. She started hers um, right around Christmas time. And it gave me the push to finally, after not working on this for over a year and a half, to pull it back out and really commit myself to finishing it this year. And it has been so much fun. I noticed Celeste is actually doing the same thing. She's been working on it on Sundays. Um, but it has been so much fun to work on it and um, compare progress and just know that I have a stitching buddy that I'm not I'm not gonna fall off the path because I know that I have committed to stitching it <laughs> so here's my progress and I will insert a picture here of where I was before but I have done quite a bit since um, starting it or picking it back up in the end of December. I stitch on it every Sunday. I finish the house. Um, and I think I was only to about right here. So I have filled in a lot of the flowers and trees. And then that middle tree that Adam and Eve are under, that was a bear. That was not my favorite part, but it's done now. And then I got Adam and Eve stitched up. And then I did put in the date. So I'm committed to finishing this in the year 2022. I think I'm about halfway done. Maybe a little less. Maybe. Just a little bit. But this is such a fun one. Um, because you can get just a little motif completed. Um, and then you feel like you have a finish for that day. And I get two or three done each Sunday motifs. I absolutely love it. And I'm looking forward to getting it done this year. So thanks girls for keeping me on the straight and narrow on that one. <laughs> okay, so now I have whips to show you that I have not worked on since my last video, but they are in my lineup for 2022. Um, so I'll go, I'll get, grab those and I'll be right back. So I haven't ironed these pieces because they've just been put away for now, but I am planning on touching each one of these this year. Um, some of them I'll tell you that I, I'll tell you what I plan on finishing and what I just plan on working on. Cause you know, I can't get them all finished, right? I wish we had more arms 
octopus arms and more time. The first one is a small and this has been started for several, several years and I need to just get it finished. I absolutely love it. And that is Heart and Hand. I believe I started this as a sal with Tina for the love of stitches. And I started it and then I got a great big huge hole in my linen. And oh, I was probably a third of the way done. It was just, it was too much um, of a hole to salvage. And the linen color is such a different linen color. I didn't want to try and patch it. So I just restarted it. And here's where I'm at. I think I'm about halfway done on this one as well. But I absolutely love it. Um, this is Dove by Weeks Dye Works, 35 count, and the called for threads. So that one needs to get finished. So on Fridays is when I have set aside to work on smalls, um, or Saturdays, I mean. But some of these I'm just going to, you know, pick up and work on until they're finished because I just want to get them done at this point. So I went through all my smalls and I just picked out my very favorites that I want to get finished. Um, this is Summer School House Series by Brenda Gervais, Abbas Lessons in Abbasidarian. And I have finished the first big pillow right here. And then I fell off the wagon. I'm stitching this with all the called for threads. And the next one that I'm working on is the, this one right here with the lady. H-I has the alphabet on all of them. So that's my little start on that. But I would really like to get the whole entire series done. I don't know if I'll get the whole entire series done this year, but I am definitely going to work on it. And then another small that I have in my lineup, and I can't believe that I haven't finished this. <laughs> I, To be honest, I lost it, and I couldn't find it for a good six months to a year. Um, and I started this with Lori, and this is sampler chart, um, the friendship sampler. And she converted the colors to, um, more Lori colors and gave me a piece of linen for it. I think this is Tycho by um, Picture This Plus. And that's my little start. I love this piece. I love the colors and it'll be so pretty up on the wall. I'm definitely getting this one finished. I've already made such a big mess. I hope that we don't hear crashing. Okay. And then the next small is Sew by Row. And this is by Lori Holt at Be My Bonnet. I love this. I want it finished up on my wall in my sewing room. I'm stitching this with all the called for weeks um, dye works threads. And I'm stitching this on flax linen by Swigart. I'm out of practice. So there's my little progress. I want to get this done this year. So on my last video, I told you that I wanted to work on this and I did for like one day. <laughs> um, but this one I'm going to work on this year. I don't know if I'm going to go for a finish. It's a big girl. But Mary 395 by Hands Across the Sea. I love their charts so much. They're a pleasure to work with. Um, when my eyes are tired and I just, I don't have a fill-in project, this is my next go-to because it's just one thread. Alphabets are easy. I worked a little bit more on the alphabet over here. I absolutely love this. Stitching it with a Verisoa Silk on 36 Count Mayflower by r and It's so good. So I definitely want to get some good progress in on that. I'm going to show you the box that I keep all my, um, so my current whips that I'm working on for that docketed week, I keep in my little basket and this is by, 
I'll put the name, the maker down below, but I have mini baskets from her. She hand makes them. They're absolutely fabulous. So I keep all of my current projects that I'm working on in there to keep my sewing room nice and clean and tidy. And then just my overflow of the samplers that I have kept out that I want to touch and work on this year. I keep in this little milk crate. All organized and just waiting for me. So if I finish a sampler or I'm feeling burnt out um, before I go and start a new project or I go and pull out something else, I have to come and go through my my whips, my sampler whips. And I absolutely, these are my very favorites. I have more. These are not all of my whips. These are just the ones that I have dedicated this year to finish. And the first one, um, I'm not sure that this one is going to be a finish this year, but I'm going to work on it. Martha Pudsey. I barely have a start on this. That's why I say, I don't know if it's going to, if we're going for a finish on this one. I'm stitching this with all the called for NPI silks. And this is 36 count vintage autumn gold by Lakeside. And I absolutely love this piece. Um, that border is just amazing. This is a must to work on. And I want it up finished on my sampler wall for sure. So if it doesn't get finished in the year 2022, I'll carry it into next year. So this next piece is shameful that it's not finished yet, but I set it aside um, mid-year last year when I decided that I wanted to focus on getting holiday seasonal pieces finished and just done framed up on my wall so that that you know I had a good base to work with and so I kind of just changed my focus and I was burnt out on this piece a little bit and this is Anniversaries of the Heart by Blackbird Designs. I started this with Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and I absolutely love this piece. This will be finished this year. I have just a block and a half left. And then the over one on several of the pieces. This is being stitched on 36 count Old Town Blend by r, &R. So I just need to finish this block, which is um, Happy Birthday um, number six. And then this middle block here for July. And I have all of my ancestors that I want to put on it all um, designated and I just need to get her done. That one's definitely doable. And it calls for a lot of thread. I'm using all the called for threads. I'm excited to get that. It's a great big huge ring of called for threads. I'm excited to go put those back into my stash when this is done so I can use them for other projects. This next one is in my bag, um, Blackbird Designs fabric that I ho I've hoarded and don't have any more of, but I had to make a bag out of it. And this is Haley's favorite inheritance piece, Rachel Howes by the Scarlet House. And this one I'm stitching for my daughter. I'm putting her name on it. I got, I, if I mess up on a piece, then I have to put it in timeout for a while and think about what I need to do to, first of all, forgive it. <laughs> it's really my fault, but just to get over that I need to, I have some, you know, major fixing to do and then um, just make a plan on how to fix it. But on this one, I have, I've shorted the board. I've somehow messed up on this border by one stitch. And so like the grass that the house sits on is supposed to be three levels of grass and I just have enough for two, but it will, the borders off is, you know, the main thing, it won't match up. So I need to fix that. Um, my plan is to just unpick these flowers right here and add a length. The, um, 
the problem I finally figured it out is like right here but I'm not going to unpick it to there I'll just I'll just fudge it and add down there but I absolutely love this piece it's stitched on 36 count legacy by picture this plus with all the called for NPIs and definitely going to work on this and get it done this year that's the plan anyway and then this next piece is another problem child and <laughs> that is Mary Bars by Stacy Nash I love this sampler I messed up on the border and I just need to fix it but I've already started stitching the grass in the house down below and <clears throat> so I don't I I'm just going to have to fudge the border but not very much progress on this one I don't know if this one will get done this year but it will definitely get love but it's another one that doesn't have that much progress this is on 36 count parchment um Zweigart base by weeks with all the called for threads and I have three more so this next one you've seen a hundred times and I love it I'm definitely gonna work on it this year this is one that will get love towards the end of the year it's like a Christmas piece to me even though it's just a sampler it will stay up all year long after I get it finished and that is Hannah Tingy, 1823 by the Scarlet House. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count vintage Luna by Lakeside. With all, um, it is the Addicts silk conversion that I'm stitching it with. And I love it. I need to fix the bottom. I was on a Zoom call and just got confident in not looking at the chart. And I thought the grass went all the way over, but there is a cartouche in the middle here. So I don't know if I'm going to unpick it or if I'm just going to adapt it and make the cartouche sit down on the grass. We'll see. I haven't decided, but I love that. Definitely will look fabulous when it's done on the sampler wall. I absolutely, I know that you hear that all the time. I absolutely love, but these are my top, top favorite samplers and the ones that I just figured, you know, life is short. And then if something happened, I want to get these ones done and left to my, my, to my family um, so that they can have pieces that are my favorite that I have left to them. So this next one, I don't know if it's on the docket. It's not on the docket to finish, but it's on the docket to work on this year. And I absolutely am completely in love with this one. It's Anne Tong Ufendel, 1835 by Hands Across the Sea. I started this one with Lori and I love it. So I've just got the corner flowers done, that tree, and then the outside border. And this one, the border met up. I think that um, I had to unpick half of it to get it to work, but when I got it done, I was so excited to just get that matched up. This is on um, 36 count Baby Sheep by Extra Design with all the called for Avera Swa silks. And again, the coverage on this is perfect with that thicker silk. And then my last one that I have kept out, it's not going to be finished this year, but it will be given some love. And that is Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow by Carriage House, Kathy Barrick. And <clears throat> I've I started this um, a couple years ago on 40 count linen and because it's such a dense stitch it's like full coverage almost um, I just I couldn't I didn't like the how hard it was to get the needle through and it was just it was like stitching a rug so I had seen Lori's 
start when we were up camping and I decided right then and there to restart mine and copy her. And this is a thread conversion from Shepherd's Bush. And you can only get this through Shepherd's Bush. If you just call them up, um, you can order the, just the threads through them if you already have the chart, or you can order the chart, the linen, and the threads through them. Because of the pandemic, they were out of a few, so they just substituted, but they work perfectly. And here is my progress. I've worked on this a little bit since you've seen it last, I believe. Just worked on filling in the barn a little bit. I've got the top finished and this block completely finished. I absolutely love this piece. It's a big project. Um, originally, my lofty goal was to finish a block a month, but it's just not, it's not feasible, especially with other whips going. If you just worked on it, by itself and then maybe one other project you could uh, attain that goal but um, I just am gonna focus on working on it and hopefully get it done in the next couple of years so I have been doing a ton of quilting and that's all the stitching that I have to show you today in a future video I would like to show you my kitted projects that I have plans to start next year. Um, I have quite a few that are on my very favorite list. They're kitted, ready to go. And so I thought that would be fun to show you. But that's all the stitching I have today for you. I'm really excited to show you what I've been up to in my sewing room this winter season. I have caught the quilting bug all over again. Therefore, a good chunk of last year, I had a back injury, and every time I sat down to sew, it just was so painful. And out of all of my daily activities, sewing was the thing that hurt my back the worst. So I took a good chunk of last year off, and I decided to put my quilting progress back into my floss tube videos so that you can see as I'm working on, you know, on a daily, weekly basis, what I've been up to. And I am just completely in love with my projects that I've been working on. Um, it's been so much fun to get back to it and just fall back in love with sewing. So my first project that I've been working on, um, <laughs> I at first, I didn't know if I was gonna do it, to be honest. I had been talking to Olivia and Yvette and as a group, we wanted to work on Dear Jane. This is a mammoth of a quilt, both in size and in skill ability. And since I haven't been sewing, you know, all of last year, I didn't know if I was up to the challenge. It's paper piecing on the machine. There are different ways that you can um, tackle this quilt, but that's the way that we have chosen to do it. And um, at first I was very overwhelmed and I just was like, oh, I can't do it. And then um, I just had a big talk with myself and I said, you can do it. And I, I decided to take the plunge and you know what? I am so, so glad that I did. I'm completely in love with the process. And if I'm in love with, you know, you, if you enjoy doing something, you're going to stick with it, correct? And um, that was the biggest thing for me was First of all, knowing that I could do it because paper piecing is a different skill level than like normal piecing on a machine. But I just, I've fallen in love with the process. I also didn't have a lot of Civil War fabrics in my stash. I've talked about that before, that it's just within the last few years that I have fallen in love with Civil War fabrics. And so I didn't think that I really had enough um, of a stash to work on this quilt and give it the justice that it deserved. I wanted to make it in Civil War fabrics. But my friend, um, Adrea, offered to sell me her quilt kit, which was absolutely perfect. And um, I'm just so thankful that that opportunity 
um, presented itself because I, I really truly didn't have the fabrics to make this quilt. So as soon as the um, quilt kit arrived, I started working on it. This is my first block and this first block turned out a little bit wonky. I've, I think I'm going to make this block again. Um, there's a couple different websites that show their method and this does look like the way hers turned out, but I'm going, I found another paper piecing um, pattern that I'm going to remake this one with. But that was my first attempt. And when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh, I can do it. And my second block. And I've kept the papers on the back until I'm ready to sew them together. And then the triangle for January's assignment. This looks very simple. It was not very simple to make. <laughs> it was a bear, but I did it. I was so proud of myself. And then this one was a little bit tricky as well. I really have fallen in love with the process of um, paper piecing on the machine though. And I absolutely love these fabrics. There's a lot of brown in this quilt, which I love. Um, I've got two more blocks to make for February, a triangle and then um, a applique block from January to make, and then I'll be caught up. But the way that we have it um, worked out right now, we will be done with it in four years. <laughs> so um, it's a long-term project, but I absolutely have just loved the process. And I'm so glad, again, that I have friends to keep me on straight and narrow and we share our progress. I believe that Carol Solbach Stitcher has um, joined us as well, which is so much fun. And then another um, floss tuber, Jennifer the Calculated Stitcher, she shows her um, Dear Jane blocks on her last video and they're amazing. She's making hers with her mom. And it's just, if you um, have the old book, you don't need the new book. It, they're the same. I actually have the old book and the new book because originally we thought there was going to be more instructions um, and such. But if you have the old book, it's just the same. So, but it's going to be so much fun. And I'm excited to share my journey with you. The next project that I've been working on is a block of the month. It is with Fig Tree Quilts and it is called looking for the hashtag here autumn frolic block of the month and these blocks are a little bit tricky um they're not perfect but they're done and done is better than perfect right absolutely love these fabrics um as you know i love autumn so this started i believe last year that little fox is so cute and the acorns. So I just have one month. Um, I have February's month. I have February's blocks to make. I'm out of practice. Um, I have February's blocks to make and then I'll be caught up on the block of the month. Love these leaves and more acorns. So that is another quilting project that I've been up to and I've been having so much fun. So then, um, I was so excited to get this next project started. This is Flea Market, and it is a quilt along through the entire year of 2022. The pattern is by Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet, and the sew along, quilt along is through Fat Quarter Shop. And these, oh, the, the baskets, I just love baskets so much. So what I decided to do with mine is I'm making mine with Lori Holt fabrics, several of her lines, and then I'm mixing Civil War fabrics in with it as well. So the first block um, for January was, I've got two design boards here stacked up. Um, the first block for January was the middle medallion, and I'm using just a cream ivory Bella solid background. And I love how this turned out. This was so, this came together so easily and is just perfect starter to get the quilt started off. 
And then um, the next assignment is to make these churn dash blocks. Here, I'm gonna find a picture of this whole quilt. So the middle is all these churn dash blocks around it. And I didn't want to cut into my big pieces of fabric yet, so I decided to make a couple of the um, basket blocks so that I can use the leftover fabrics for the little pieces. So there was my first um, basket and the inside is Civil War fabrics and then this brown um, is from Stitch by Lori Holt. Love it. They just go so well together. Um, her fabrics go really well with Civil War fabrics. And then this is the next block. So then I had enough pieces to get started on churn dashes. So then here's some, there's 24 total of these little guys and they are coming together. They're a lot of fun. Some of my corners are turned over, but I added purples in there, some more purples and mustards and cheddars and I'm just, there's some um, of her fabrics in there. It's just a mix and I, I'm loving the scrappiness and it's gonna be so much fun. So that quilt along goes all the way through December. It's very easy, um, steady, slow, no pressure kind of so long. So the next and final quilt that I worked on is called Simply Beautiful by Coriander Quilts. The designer is Cory Yoder. And I ordered this and it got here like on a Monday. And I pulled it out and looked at the pattern and I was like, you know, this is a really fun and easy quilt. I can get this done pretty quickly. So um, on Tuesday, I spent the day cutting out the entire quilt. And the quilt comes with panels and then fabric to make blocks. So all of these middle pieces that look like applique, they are actually just a panel, a printed panel that comes with the kit. And the kit comes in a box like this with all of the needed fabrics, including the binding. You just have to order a backing. So I just cut out all the strips. They're log cabin blocks. This is what um, most of the quilt blocks that you sew together look like. And then there's like a half piece for the outside border of the panel. So I spent all of Tuesday cutting it out and then Wednesday with my daughter's help I spent the entire day sewing and it was so much fun. We just blasted music and I would chain piece and then I would hand each piece to her as she was ironing them. I would chain piece the next section. It reminded me of the good old days because she used to come and hang out with me in my sewing room. And we just had so much fun. We laughed and giggled and had snacks, listened to music, and it was just a fun and easy sewing project. I have a lot of quilts that I'm working on that are going to be a year to four year projects. So it was fun and just satisfying, a quick satisfaction to get in a fun and done quilt. So this is the completed quilt top. And I just love these fabrics. They're not Christmas fabrics, even though they're, you know, red and green. They're floral and they have some pink in there. So my plan is to keep this up um, December through February. I just absolutely love it. And it was just, it was a quick satisfaction, fun project to work on. So that is all of my quilting. Next, I have the giveaway winners from my last video and a new giveaway. I have some stitching related happy mail to share with you and the giveaway winners from last video and a new giveaway to share with you today. My first um, happy mail was a Christmas stitching exchange that um, a group of friends and I um, partake in each Christmas season and I just absolutely was so lucky to receive my gift from Nicole from Nicole's Needleworks and she stitched this piece by Brenda Gervais 
it is out of the booklet that has all the collection of snowmen in it. I'd really love to stitch all the pieces because I absolutely love this. And she put on the back some um, buffalo check. And I absolutely love this. I've, I enjoyed that it was um, a winter stitch and not just a Christmas stitch so that I could keep it out. So that has been so much fun. She sent along some crocheted washcloths and a whole bunch of yummy treats from Starbucks and that's all gone and the washcloths are being used, but she absolutely spoiled me and I just, I absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Nicole. She has become a really good friend over the last couple of years and this stitching community is just a huge blessing in my life. All of you, I um, call friends. And then the next piece of Happy Mail, I had shown this to you um, when I was working on my half of it last year. And this is the Berry Bowl Sampler by Scarlet House and Heartstring Samplery. It's a collaboration between the two. So we both um, stitched this side and are swapping. And this is being stitched with Adele from Smurfette Stitches. And this is the half that she stitched for me. I am so excited about it. I can't wait to, um, so I'm going to stitch this other piece. So this is the other half of what I stitched for her on. And this is Ren. I think hers is Legacy. So I'm gonna combine them. I'm a little bit nervous about how to do that, but um, it'll be okay. So I'm gonna get those sewn together and stitch the other half. But I've mentioned this before, she stitches in the opposite direction that I do, like her top leg of her cross lays the opposite direction of mine. And so it'll be really fun that you'll be able to see that two stitchers, um, you know, collaborated on this and stitched it together. So that was so much fun to receive in the mail. She also sent me the most beautiful velvet um, homemade tomato pin cushion and a floss ring with the berry bowl on there. A floss ring and tags. Words are hard and I'm out of practice. <laughs> and a homemade project bag with the cutest fabric. Thank you, Adele. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to work on this. And then, um, I have a some um, I have I want to announce the winners for last um, videos giveaway the first one is Santa's house and this is Mary Kubisek it's k-u-b-i-c-e-k and that is Santa's house if you guys will just email me your address I'll put my email down below and then Bells of Christmas goes to Gracie Robles with Cross Therapy. The Night Before Christmas goes to Teresa Vickers. Chantilly goes to Sherry808. Holiday Quaker goes to Glinda Gomez. And... Someday at Christmas from Heartstring Samplery goes to Colleen Tennant. So if you will email me your address, I'll get those out in the mail this week. And then I have a new giveaway. This was um, so kindly gifted to me from a viewer from Instagram. Her name is Trudy and she is treas True Treasures One on Instagram, but she had like so many of us bought two of everything and decided to share with us. So this first one, and I have this quilt book as well from Fat Quarter Shop, it is so amazing. A scrapbook of quilts and it is a collaboration from Joanna Figueroa from Fig Tree and then Carrie Nelson. And they both made the same quilt but with different fabrics to just show what it looks like to make the same quilt with a different outcome, depending on what fabrics you use and colors. So if you'd like to be entered in for this one, just say a scrapbook of quilts. Love that. Thank you so much, Trudy. 
And then the next one that she sent is Kaleidoscope from Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. And I have made the table runner out of this um, book. It has pillows, different size blocks, the quilt. Nicole with Nicole's Needleworks is working on this quilt right now and it is absolutely gorgeous. So if you'd like to be entered in for this one, just say Kaleidoscope. And then Fat Quarter Shop sent a whole bunch of awesomeness. Um, some of these will be for future giveaways, but they sent Farm Life. And this is a pattern by It's So Emma. <laughs> the pig, um, sheep and cow rear end. <laughs> and then Autumn Spice. This is another pattern by It's So Emma. It's So Emma, I love the acorn. And then they sent um, some quilt patterns. Love, love, love this. This one is Zurich. That would be so pretty for winter. And this next one is Alpine Blooms. That's such a classic block. Love that. And those are yummy fabrics in there. And then this one is timeless as well. Evening Primrose. And that would look pretty in all sorts of different, uh, different color fabric lines. And then they sent a whole bunch of yumminess, um, all from, or by Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. The first one is Sticky Notes. These are Busy Bee Sticky Notes. These go perfectly with her planner. And they sent Vintage Housewife Cross Stitch. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. This would be cute um, if you even just stitched little individual blocks and finish this and finish them as pillows they'd be cute in a tiered tray in a kitchen and then they sent the matching apron needle minder and then Lori's flea market baskets um, cross stitch this is the companion and matching um, piece that goes with the flea market quilt that I'm making I love the gingham in there and then they sent her set k stitch cards those are so cute i love the train it's my favorite and then her awesome daisy bag and this is one of the big vinyl bags from fat quarter shop this can hold a great big huge project i absolutely love that too so thank you fat quarter shop i'll um, be putting some of these in future giveaways as well I wanted to thank you all for joining with me, spending some of your valuable time with me today. I hope that you get lots of stitching time in and I just really appreciate all of your friendships and this community is just such a fun, fun thing to be a part of. We can share and talk about our hobbies and it's just fun to watch each other's progress. So until next time, happy stitching. <laughs>